Hello and welcome back to Caves of Cud Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunting series. I am uh, going to check out this name location and I'm trying to, I'm hoping that there are some legendary frogs down here. Seems there are some lizard folk, but not, not so much frogs. Also, this is already not a great situation. Oof. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna take some witchwood bark. We are confused. That's okay. Um, what's not okay is we are getting hit by some salamanders. Some of those sound effects are are a little bit. Uh, maybe I'm just like not used to them, but they sound very bizarre. Uh, all right, we have a croc. We should be able to take on this croc. Single croc, not not too bad, not too, not too much to deal with. I was um, I was kind of mid thought, and then I got distracted at one point. I was talking about how Kazukut is technically a traditional roguelike um, a while ago. You know what I th what I mean by that is uh, un unconvinced. Is I think that at this point, I think it's fair to say that. Caves of Cud is better as an RPG than it is as a traditional roguelike. Because it is so much fun, but when you play it in quotation marks roguelike mode, it just feels so punishing and so unforgiving. Um, and like, you know, you can definitely be down for some of that. I, I, I can appreciate an, uh, a punishing game as much as anyone else but also it's kind of nice to just like progress and play a game and and see you know beat up some some goblins and it's just like you know having less risk associated with it is is also kind of nice we got a new quest to visit another historic site um i think that some uh roguelikes not a lot really to be honest are, you know, they, they, their enjoyment is predicated on the fact that they're very difficult. But, like, the thing is, is they are also all semi-RNG based. Like, a lot of them are RNG based. And I know that part of the fun of conquering a roguelike is to conquer that RNG. You're basically trying to mitigate uh, that RNG. That's, that is very much the the challenge of these games um and all that really means is that you're taking a situation that you know that is very much against you and turning it into you know in your favor um oh this is not like like this one for instance okay let's grab some do we have any more witchwood bark we do Um, not a huge fan of this situation. Um, so, like, but you could still say that, you know, traditional roguelikes, you know, since they are RNG based, you can have good RNG and bad RNG. And, and so, uh, you know, it's fair to say that there's a, a little bit of luck involved and that can be fun. You know, you can have fun with that. You can definitely enjoy, hey, I got this cool weapon that I've never seen before and it's gonna help basically carry me to the end of the game. Um, there's a lot of enjoyment to that. And then there's enjoyment to like, this is a ridiculous situation and I can't possibly escape from it. Um, and that can also be fun. But like also sometimes it's just kind of nice to see like, I don't know what a game, what what the full potential of a run could have been without having to wrestle RNG to the ground and you know mug it for all that it's worth. Just like, hey, buddy, let me have my fun. Quit throwing chrome pyramids at me. Let me just let me let me have some fun here. I don't know why I did that. I could have just looked at it. That was very silly. So, um, you know, the reason I say, so uh, attacking these crocs is not a great idea, to be honest. 
The reason I say that I think that Caves of Cud is better as an RPG than it is as a roguelike is because, I mean, a lot of its fun is on its generation. But also, like, you can end up in these situations where it's like, this is clearly not my fault that I died. Like, you know, definitely I can I could have taken better steps to avoid the situation, but you can just end up in unwinnable situations. Um, you know, or let me put it another way. You can end up in situations that you cannot casually get out of. When I say casually, it's like I, I find it fun to just kind of turn my brain off a little bit and treat the game like an RPG and just like, you know, level up my stuff and and see some of my crazy mutations coming together. And like, that's a lot of fun to me. Um, if I have to take the game seriously at all times, then that's less fun for me. Uh, and that's how you have to play a traditional rogue. Like you gotta like make use of all of your resources all the time. You know, playing every single step, like with full contemplation. And um, at a certain point, I gotta say, pass. <laughs> Like this situation. I walked in there trying to take care of that dude. And this is getting me killed. And it did get me killed. I just wanted to kill one of those plants. I didn't realize how nasty those plants were. So, yeah, I, I just lost a lot of progress. Like a lot of progress. That's a bummer. Roleplay mode is no slouch. Especially if you play like me. <laughs> Someone out there is, is just going to be like, you play too fast. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I uh, straight up don't. I play the way that I have fun. So, uh, you know, sometimes that means um, ending up in situations like this for sure. Can we grab a friend? We can. Oh, okay. Which would bark? There we go. Remember how long ago I leveled up? Well. Now remember, south is not any better than where we were. I really don't like this situation where my clones are sticking put and they're probably going to shoot me. Please help me, birds. Please help me, chameleon. All right. Hey, there's some star apple. Um. Yeah, I don't want to necessarily play the game like, oh, hey, I accomplished literally anything. I'm going to go and save at a town. But I might do a little bit of that. Just a little bit. Intimidate. Intimidate isn't a guarantee, by the way. A bark armor. That might be nice. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's do bark armor. I also have a really crappy weapon right now. So it would be nice to get a better weapon. A dragonfly really... Well, get down, Mr. President, and... Right in front of that croc. Okay. You pass by a leather whip and a lacquered smiling sun mask with filters. Okay, we're, we're good. Um, this might be different this time. High explosive grenade. That's a better find, actually. Uh, the thing that... Oh, iron mace. There we go. Just exactly what I was hoping for. Um, the thing about roleplay mode that's interesting is... Um, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but the generation from the seed is not perfect. And so even though you'll end up with a lot of the same stuff in a, in a run... Um, when if you die and you come back to an area, it'll it'll be a different generation. 
it'll be slightly different. We have two chameleons, which is not ideal. So you can end up in a like okay yeah there is a um, there is a chest there and it was it spawned with a grenade in it. it might not be the same grenade like yeah there's a this is a tile or uh, a screen with a lot of lizards on it might be a different number of lizards got a turquoise tube this time rubber gum injector so uh, you know the generation is not perfect and I think I feel if that's not intentional I think it should be so we've cleared this top floor I am going to go back I I hate that both of our quests both of them are asking us to go through the hills that's like just the worst just like actually the worst um I feel like I should just like go somewhere else I don't know where but, like, it may as well be a named location. Named locations are just, like, more interesting and compelling to me than a lot of other places. Uh, we're gonna proselytize this croc. No, we're not. We're gonna temporal fugue. Okay. It would have been nice if we could have kept those clones a bit longer. Okay, you're famished. This uh, generation seems a bit kinder this time. Can we proselytize them? Yes. I already weakened them, unfortunately, so they're probably going to die very soon. Well, they surprisingly survived that onslaught of salamanders. Can we rest until... Yeah, party healed. Perfect. Nice. I still have a uh, clever girl installed, by the way. So, um... I can... Uh, I have the, the quick button that generally... Uh, you use to wait until fully healed also works for the party. So that way I don't have to, you know, wait a certain number of turns until our friend is fully healed. It's just a really nice feature of the mod. I haven't been seeing, like, I keep track of the Caves of Cud mod scene. I haven't really been seeing any new, like, mods. You know, there was a while where, you know, you could, you could get, you could find a new mod almost every day. And I haven't been seeing any new ones for a while. I don't expect any game-changing mods. My favorite ones, as, I, as I've often said, are little tweaks, the little tweak mods, like, um... The auto hockey, what is it now? Shift R, can't recoil, whoops. Yeah, the shift R, uh, the, the one that lets you like um, switch your grenades, switch your recoiler, uh, That that's like one of my favorite mods ever, cause it's so easy. It's such an easy mod to, to like incorporate into your, your play. I would love it to be like part of CUD, canon, you know, canonically. Um, and like, you know, obviously Hunter's, um, map pin mod and, and dynamic lighting mod are, are really, really nice. Little tweaks here and there are my favorite mods. Oof. Um, let's temporal fugue. Wow, they're really just kind of walking right up to us, despite the fact that we have like an entire army of dudes.
Okay, I, I gotta leave. Okay, that was uh, that was kind of life threatening. We're okay. Uh, we have temporal fugue back, so let's go back here, and we'll temporal fugue again. Uh, I don't like the situation. I'm gonna come back here and just hit them one by one. Why is it saving the game? That's interesting. Well, these salamanders are our friend now, for the moment. As soon as I see a croc, uh, they become our enemies. And our friend is dead. Okay. Um, those salamanders are a problem. Because as soon as I hit those crocs, salamanders become our enemy. Let's let's leave. I'm very close to hitting level six. Can we level up our temporal fugue yet? No. Wow. We're really uh, kind of bottlenecked by our level right now. It's because um, our ego is you know made up for quite a lot of levels there, and it's it's not gonna let us like level it up it's already higher level than we can we can change it um we could throw some points into double muscle but i kind of want to just rely on rapid advancement for our physical mutations um oh i'm back to having no cudgel skills that's pretty good um because you know i i died let's uh, let's go back to our village and then we'll save and we'll we'll go and do something else maybe Maybe I'll try again on some of those other quests. What I'd like to do is uh, we can go to the rusted archway and then just kind of work our way around and see if we can't find one of the ruins without having to like do the whole moving north from this section. Um, all right, are, we're lost. Yeah, we are lost. We managed to proselytize a salt hopper though, which is kind of nice. And we leveled up. Let's heal, eat. Plus three hit points for the rest of the day, that's nice. Something. That can save your life, you know? We're doing pretty good, like on our physical front, we can we can take down snap jaws with with res, uh, relative ease. Let's see, uh, get items F9, skilled cloth robe is a nice get. Painted, well, I guess we already looked at it. We must have already looked at it. No, we didn't, okay. Sultan history, Mupitar. I wanted that skilled uh, robe for obvious reasons. If you don't know, it's uh, that's unshelled reptile rep, and that is a tends to be a good one to have. Um, we do have our nylon body pack. You are lost. Hate the hills. <laughs> Truly hate them. <laughs> the worst. Forgot we have harvestry, so we're getting some star apples, which is kind of nice. You regain your bearings. So we're gonna go to the rusted archway um, because we we need to go like what is it five to nine parasangs north of something. Two to six porous, par parasangs. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So it could even be as far north as this section. Oh God, <laughs> look at this mess. Do these guys, do these guys are worth five XP each. They have grenades. My salt hopper died. Ah, uh, this is a job for temporal fugue.
Okay, let's uh, let's grab a which would bark. Nice thing about this, about a lot of snap jaws, is you can probably find some good stuff amongst that business. We got some um, robes. That's pretty good. So what do we got here? Leather apron, studded leather armor. Might be worth taking. Bronze mace, staff, steel mace. Heck yeah, bud. All right, let's grab that mace. Oh, we're out of bullets. I just want to grab my mace. Is this it? No, that's an iron mace. Just, just let me grab my mace. Twelve plus twelve heat row. That's a, a the a, the effects of an apron. Hand axe. Did we grab the the mace? Let me see. Yes. All right. Uh oh, what is this? What is this? Stun rod. Mm, I don't think they're as good as a steel mace. No, they're not. They don't have the pen. But still, kind of tempting. This early in the game, they could be they could be all right. Uh, there's nothing else here, right? Just the studded leather armor, which is tempting, but no. We don't have to be here anymore, right? Oh, we do. I, I, okay, yeah, we do, sort of. I'm heading south now. Oh, you know what I should do? Oh, this is actually a really good idea. This is, I never, I didn't, really didn't think I, I, I don't know why I haven't thought of this before. I found some ruins. Nice. Um... We're probably going to get lost. Oh, we found some ruins. More ruins. This might be what we're looking for, so this point would be moot. Forgotten ruins. Oh my god. Hate that. Can't, can't really deal with that. My god. Okay, can we leave? Yeah, we can. Okay. Here's here's my thought. So we have to go two to six parasangs north. Um, what we can do is find out where where what um. It's not row. What column is this area in? Right. What I mean by that is this is in a parasang, right? Um, I don't know which, like, the, a parasang is a th is a three by three grid, basically, of tiles, right? And our quest is to find something that is two to six parasangs north. The trick is, is that it's exactly north from the location of said um, thing, you know, like in this case, our, our, our city here. So which column of the three by three um, parasang is this in? Is it on the left, the middle, or the, the right? Does that make sense? Because if we find out, then we know which column that we need to find the, uh, the, the, the whatever, the quest in. So the way we find this out, it's not a great um, solution, but it is a solution, is I'm gonna leave on the right side, and did I leave the parasang? No. So that could either mean it's in the center or it's on the left side. So I'm going to go back to the current location and we're going to go, we're going to leave out the right side. Oh, there's a caravan here. Buy your slugs real quick. Okay, so oh, I have to kill this, these two guys. So did I leave the parasang? I did not. So that means that the brass sight shimmer is on the left column. 
the leftmost column. So there's a left and middle and a right. It's on the left one. And so therefore, um, two to six, I know that it's on the left side. So if I go, you know, I'm on the center here. If I start exploring from the top down, and we know it's not in there because it would have said so, um, we, know, uh, we know we're on the right column. We don't have to like go directly north from from that location we can we can explore from the top down why would you want to do this well because sometimes there's inconvenient there's there's things in the way you know um and it's the hills and i hate the hills and sometimes the hills are also uh like for instance they're blocked with shale so you end up in a situation where there's just a bunch of canyon in the way and um you know sometimes a canyon arrow you know that's a there you go it's a <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm very I'm very proud of that joke. All right. So um, I'm heading south from pretty much the sixth parasang. There's some nasty stuff on. I I'm sure there's gonna be there's a probably a legendary boar on this tile, and I do not want to deal. I'm getting every sense that there is a legendary board. Let's try and proselytize this lad. Yes, nice. Wait, what? Don't, don't fight me. Whatever's over there, it needs to not. This, uh, this lad did a lot of killing for us just now. Okay, what do we got? Engraved bronze mace, don't need it. Don't need any of this. All right, so we're still heading down. Chromium zone, Elilishan. There we go. So we uh, completed the, the quest. I don't think we have to do anything here. We just had to find it. Find Dazo Nip. Did we, apparently we did find that and we found Chromium zone. What? So I found both of them? Excuse me? We're, we're done? Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's honestly incredible. Is this club any good? No, it's not. It would be really good if, after having found it, I continued to explore this tile, found a slug snout, and died instantly. I'd be really good. I'd be really happy with that. That'd be amazing. <laughs> All right, let's head back. Please do not get lost in the hills. Thank you. Thank you, Cud. Cud's being uncharacteristically kind to me today. Okay, let's talk to the legendary water vines this person. Wake them up. I've located Dazo Nip. Got the da uh, the recoiler for our village and our thing is increased and we have to go talk to the Barathermites. And um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's talk to Elder Aruhuru. You know, I've located the thing. He's going to offer me stuff. Portable beehive. Folding uh, book. Small sphere of negative weight. I think is just the correct choice there. Inspiration to name your leather armor. Uh, okay, enter the name. Protec. Self. And I'm also going to make it brown. Yeah? Alright, do we have anything uh, to gain from you anymore? Roast jam on top of stripped casserole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. What, what does this do for us? Whenever you take damage, there's a 9% chance you heal. Well, that's actually not bad. 10% chance to heal when you take damage? That's kind of nice. That's one of the nicest uh, recipes I think I've seen. So, yeah, teach me how to make that. What does that require? I'd like to know just what ingredients end up making that. Um, up, 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 uh, recipes. Crock, jerky, and star apple jam. Hmm. Okay. We can do that. We can, we can make that at some point. Um, yeah, that's really cool. So, I guess uh, we're at level 7 now. 
we should be able to level up Temporal Fugue. Yes. Yes, we can. Can we do it again? No. And that's a shame because in the next level up, it will we'll have three copies instead of two. But never mind. Um, we can level up Ego. I don't know if I should, though, necessarily. I think we... Yeah, th th this is kind of the like whole point of this build. So yeah, I will. So now we are at a Temporal Fugue 4. And um, apparently we don't get three copies. I guess this is telling me about this rank and not the rank I'm at. I don't know how to put that. Increased by three due to your high ego. This mutation's rank is two. So I guess we'll be cooking up like four copies of ourselves. Let's just have a quick look. One, two, just two still. So I don't know. I guess I don't understand how that works. Still a lot of mysteries to solve in Cud. But in any case, we solved both of our quests. So I guess I'll be going to Greek Gate in the next episode. Um, and uh, continuing to, to work towards a, basically a playable build in which we can stomp Cud uh, and get, get our Chivos. Um, I do have it open here. There's a bunch of stuff I want to do. Um, the one I'm currently working towards is having 30 clones of myself in the map um, with Temporal Fugue. And we're basically only going to have... Temporal Fugue is going to be our only ESP uh, mutation. Um, I would like to do some crazy stuff like make friends with Maman Soul Drinker. But um, that's, a, that's a tricky one. Um, we can't clone Sisyphus because Jopa is, is not, not in our vicinity anymore so there's a lot of like really tricky um quests there's you know also like throw a item worth 200 reputation down the uh technology hole that would be worth doing and then there's a lot of rng based ones like recover the ruin of house isner yeah good luck go go and get kindrish i dare you go ahead and do that i mean you know these are things we can do. We could try and make friends with the trolls. The trolls apparently have info on relics, and um, so you can trade secrets with them, and they'll they'll tell you where some of these uh, relics are that are worthwhile. But uh, actually, I think maybe they specifically know where Kindrish is. I think that's the deal. Either way, um, I hope you're enjoying the series. Definitely hit that like button if you enjoyed this episode and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.